Good day, it's a sunny day. April 17th, 2011. This is Dr. Conrad Miller with your Fukushima update. Today we'll talk a little bit about what's going on the plant at the plants in Fukushima and what's going on in Hawaii and also in India where they're building the biggest nuclear plant complex in the world. Well, we know that that wave, that tsunami that hit the Fukushima plant was actually 46 feet high, 14 meters, a big wave. It swept away all the uh, things to service the, f the fuel pools with coolant, or with fresh water, so that was gone re immediately. The four reactors, one through four, are still all going through different phases of meltdowns, and the fourth reactor still doesn't have water, enough water to keep it cool. And uh, that still could go up again. The first reactor similarly. And a lot of them are holding water that they've pumped in about 200 tons a day. But the containment is holding that water and it may crack. And it's another earthquake. They just had another one yesterday that was 5.9. And actually, the New York Times in an article on the 14th said there actually has been 500 earthquakes greater than 5.0 since March 11th in Japan. So these could go on for years after a 9.0 according to seismologists. So let me just tell you a few things. Uh, the Nuclear Information Resource Service tells us that in uh, Hilo they measured the levels of iodine-131 and cesium-137. Those are just two of over 500 radionuclides that were released, are released when you have accidents like Chernobyl and Fukushima. And the levels in the milk were six times higher than what's acceptable. So kids drinking that, you can get the iodine-131 to go to your thyroid and that can cause thyroid cancer. So be very careful there. But what does that mean? I mean they're only measuring those two. Uh, they also say that the releases of cesium-137 are already 50% of what was released at Chernobyl. And the cesium is the one that body recognizes is potassium and it incorporates into all your cells and that is the most voluminous of all the radionuclides produced by fissioning uranium in a nuclear power plant. So cesium-137 has a half-life of 30 years and a hazardous life of 300 to 600 years and they're finding it on the ground around Fukushima so you know that really nobody can go back there within at least 25 miles. We know that the Becquerel count there is uh, four times what it is around the Chernobyl plant already. So uh, what else can we tell you here? Um, there's some criticality in the reactor one because they already found iodine-131 which shouldn't be there anymore. So things are just going on all by themselves and they're trying to keep that cool. China last month suspended all approvals of new nuclear projects. That's China. And Germany has decided to phase out nuclear energy. Meanwhile, in the United States, all the licensing extension applications were approved at, since March 11th, including one two days before to the Vermont Yankee plant that the legislature wants to close and the governor wants to close because it's leaking tritium into the Connecticut River and has been, but the, but the company that runs it has been lying about it, denying it for a long time. Uh, they wanted to decommission the plant, so the Fukushima plants, but the truth is that they really won't be able to get into those plants for at least 10 years. So the, the, the decommissioning may take 30 years, but that will break the plant down and take the all these things become so radioactive and uh, this is probably going to take about 30 years to do it's never been done in Japan so uh, it'll t it'll be uh, another little adventure and the company that's uh, the group that's working on it they, they've dubbed themselves Mount Fuji because they're calling themselves anyway translated to English management support for Fukushima US and Japan initiative Mount Fuji 
and the radiation levels have risen in the ocean outside of the Fukushima plants again. They're five times higher than they were on Monday, but they're only 5,000 times what they should be compared to 5 million times what they were a couple of weeks ago. But still, that's not too good. And remember, iodine has a half-life of eight days and a hazardous life of 80 to 160 days. So you have to worry about it getting into the fish and the water. And it's uh, only one of the iodines, though. There's another radioactive iodine that has a half-life of 15 million years. So we're playing with the craziest stuff in the world, the most dangerous industry in the world. And TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, is the world's largest private electricity company know that and they're the ones that are being partnered with to build the plants in Georgia and uh, what else can I tell you here oh India time for India I guess India India has decided to ban all imports of Japanese goods for three months it's the first company to do that and France, they just had a little vote over there, a little um, interviews with a lot of people, and 57% of the French people that were interviewed said that they would like to discontinue nuclear power. But when they asked them if they want to pay for it with higher prices for electricity, 72% literally said no. No, no, not we, oui, we. Oui. All right, so let's talk about plant in Egypt, in uh, India rather, that will be, if completed, the biggest nuclear plant group on Earth. It's going to have almost 10,000 megawatts of power. An average nuclear plant has about 1,000. They're building six. They bought up 2,300 acres there. But 50 Indian scientists, activists, and, ac and academics have called for a moratorium on new nuclear projects because the Japanese nuclear crisis is a wake-up call for India, they say. And also the area where they're building these six, these six nuclear reactors, this plant, is going to be on a cliff. But, guess what? 95 earthquakes between 1985 and 2005. Not very good. And, uh, of course, the Indian officials say, well, they were all minor, or a lot of them were minor. And if it's on a cliff, oh, the tsunamis, you don't have to worry about tsunamis, but got to worry about earthquakes, right? All right. And uh, they, there's been protests there for the people that didn't want to get their land taken over. And what they did was the state officials have banned gatherings of more than five people in the villages near the site. I guess they don't have a Bill of Rights in India like we do in America for a freedom of assembly. A wonderful Bill of Rights that makes America so great. And also India... Remember, they never signed a non-proliferation treaty where they would get help with their nuclear power plants, but then they couldn't use it for nuclear bombs. But they didn't sign that. Neither did Pakistan, and neither did Israel. Those are the three countries that didn't, but I believe North Korea did, something like that. So uh, the United States is helping them without them having signed that. And the, uh, the reactors in India are mostly going to be built with the help of Russia, but of course the in the... Uh, French Arriva company is going to help, and um, the regulatory board is just like the United States, where the head of the Atomic Energy Commission is now the chairman of the regulatory board, and they're just like in the United States, we had this atomic, our Atomic Energy Commission, and we disbanded it because they were promoting nuclear energy too much, and some say, of course, that our nuclear regulatory commission of today is still promoting it too much, like licensing all those plants, which most nuclear plants really should only run for 20 to 30 years, and almost all of ours are 40, and now they want them to go 60, so they'll embrittle and they'll leak and so on. Remember, we have 23 Mark I General Electric plants in the United States, just like the ones at Fukushima. And the farmers and fishermen around this town, it's funny the name of the town, Mad Band, and they're not happy, they're pretty mad in Mad Band. And what they're worried about is, for example, is that the plant's going to discharge all this hot water into the ocean, which is what nuclear plants do. They take water in, and then they, they cool the plant with it, and they send it back out, and sometimes the water's 30 degrees warmer than it is 
normally. So the fish don't really want to come there anymore, or some fish do. But in other words, it'll, there's 20,000 people uh, that supply seafood to Mumbai, Mumbai, the big city in Egypt, in India rather, it's close by, and also to Europe. So those fishermen are all in danger. And Atik Hathwardkar, he's a 22-year-old fisherman, he says that nobody will buy our fish when they know that nuclear plant is nearby. They want the country to move forward, but they don't care what happens to the common man. That's what he thinks of the government officials, which is really the same story everywhere, where you have these big power plants, big industry, big corporations. Many local residents, as a form of protest, have refused to accept payment for the land the government forcibly acquired for the plant. The government is offering $33,000 for every 2.5 acres, but only 153 of the people who offer the money out of 2,000 landowners have taken the money. Pramila Gawankar, the wife of the mango farmer who's leading the protests around Madban, said she had no use for the money the government was offering and was adamant that she would reclaim her orchards and fields. It's nice to look out on the fields, she said. We have the sea, we have the fish. We want for nothing. But the powers that be want that big plan in my bond. This is Dr. Conrad Miller, signing off. Until the next time I speak to you, good day.